Yeah. All right, we're recording. Thank you, boys, for being here. How the fuck are you? How's the drive from uh, Byron you, right? Bay? Uh, it was long as always, although it felt a bit less long this time. Um, we stopped at Crescent Head and didn't do anything. Uh, I got a Nenish tart, oh. which I hadn't had for, you know, like eight years. Do you know what a Nenish tart is, Kenny? No. Explain it. Uh, it's like a kind of shortbread base, I would say, in like a cup. I love the level of detail we're going into on the pastry, by the way, for straight up. Well, Thank you, the Jacob. Most part. Yeah. And then it's got a layer sure of strawberry are. jam. Yeah. And then a layer of uh, whipped cream. Yes. And then on top of that, there's like half, half. One half is like pink glaze, and one half is like chocolate bre- uh, glaze, like a donut glaze on top yeah, of it. Yeah, like that. a hard icing. And then, like, I think Sarah uh, tried to t- tell me about this. Up and, and down the right. East Coast. Well, up and down, it just throughout Australia, but specifically up and down the East Coast, it's like a really. Where does that name come from? I have no idea. Nina, I think, invented it. <laughs> Nina, Nina. I thought you said Inish time. Yeah, okay, Nina. Nina-ish. 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 But it was Nina. like, okay. it was like, it kind of so tasted a bit like this girl Nina. And they're like, oh, it's kind of Nina-ish. <laughs> it's Nina-ish. Oh, yeah. I like that it, there's a thing in Scotland, like, what do you call it here? Like caramel slice. <laughs> in Scotland, we call it millionaire shortbread, which I really love because it's like <laughs> fancy shortbread. It's got caramel and chocolate on it. Millionaire, millionaire shortbread. Millionaire yes. shortbread. That's what the it's called. Vanilla slice here is called a snot block. <laughs> what? what? I've never heard that before. Yeah, it's just like boogers on a bit of shortbread. <laughs> How good is that though? Mm. My, I grew up- hot cakes. I grew up- um, and I'm going to make a couple of assumptions. You guys grow, grew up in Byron Bay area? No. Uh, no Not at all. Cronulla. We just that. We just oh, you guys grew up in Cronulla. Oh, I grew up in Cronulla, which oh. is where we stayed last night with Mumsy and Dadsy. Oh, cool. Yeah. I grew up on the south coast. Whereabouts? Bermagui. Right. I'm Joe's Bay Boy. Hey, I'm a husky. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Husky ah, kid. I, yeah. yeah I t- tell the story. Well, I taught, at, uh, did a prac at, um, you didn't go to that naughty school down there. What's it called? Vincenia High? Yeah, Vincenia. Nah. I, I, I was by that by the time that Vincenia High opened, I think I was um, homeschooling in Singleton with Pentecostal parents for teachers. Jesus. It was pretty fucking wild. <laughs> I'm saying Jesus, <laughs> not even ironically. It was yeah, t- interesting <laughs> times. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you that story off fucking microphone because other people have heard this, that story before. But um, so you're for, so you're Cronulla and you're South Coast, yep. but you guys met and. Yeah, we met in Byron. So Jacob and his brother Jesse, they obviously grew up together down there. And then Cam, the guitarist, is from Port Macquarie. And yeah, me and Jacob met and in Byron and kind of, I don't know, we'd just see each other around a bit. And um, What took you to Byron? Is it the same I was escaping a uh, scary ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I didn't even know that it was like How a scary? Cool like t- out of 10? Oh, uh, in in hindsight, was a four. I got about it. I got to it. Like my mum loves me more than anything in this world, and she encouraged me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that That's a good fucking solid yeah. eight, I reckon. I love that Jacob just said his mum loves him more than anything in this world, and his brother's sitting out in the green room right now. Yeah, <laughs> crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, like, with fucking wounds from your ex girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. I've I've never had had him him you tart. should go. <laughs> um, but the reason I was going to just I, I make an assumption, you guys grew up around beaches and so grew up surfing and that whole culture. Mm-hmm. The importance of the fucking bakery. Yep, very oh, important. To surfing yeah. is something that we don't. No one really talks about. Yeah, no one. You can't. Um, like you ask a surfer about fucking baked goods, they fucking know their shit. Yeah, <laughs> I they think, do. I think yeah, it was actually on Doctor Carl the other week. Um, someone was like, oh, um. Hey, blah, 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 bakery food. And he's like, it's actually the only thing that can fulfill a hunger after surfing is bakery food. It was scientifically, <laughs> it's scientifically, scientifically proven. proven. A Dr. fucking Carl. chalky, it's like chalky milk <laughs> and a vanilla slice or a fucking meat pie. Yeah. Dude. I've, I I would that was my whole childhood. You'd finish I'd have a fucking surf. I, I grew up in I spent 8 years in Tasmania and uh, I was the world I am and re, I remain I'm not a surfer anymore. Um but I was at the time Trade a very on. non-committal bodyboarder and a great disappointment to my father who was a stand up <laughs> fucking surfer. Coast. If yeah, you yeah. Up on the South Coast, you bodyboard. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> fucking, and Tasmania was huge. I fucking was right in the time of like Wingnut Smith and shit. Yeah. And, uh, and, but anyway, I, uh, it was fucking cold and we were really poor. And so I had no wetsuit at all and we were serving in the middle of winter in Tasmania <laughs> up until the time I was like 12. Like from fucking eight to 12, we just used to surf with fucking. Like like t shirts on, and fucking like woolen socks as like fucking old school. 
woolen socks on f- as fucking uh, like uh, you booties. know like booties. as booties yeah. and like you know like the you, you've got the fucking flippers otherwise they just yeah. you get your fucking feet get torn mm. apart by the rubber yeah we're going with woolen socks <laughs> And like just half drowning because he's so heavy from all the things. My br- older brother's got like a fucking steamer and just like <laughs> loving life. Like, fuck, you know, he worked at Coles, he saved up his money. My parents like, you've got a board, that's what we can afford. If you want to surf, fucking surf. <laughs> he was so cold, but my older brother always used to get us um, uh, a fucking meat pie and a chalky milk on the way home. And it would, there's something, and in the Dats on 180B, is something very restorative, like your feet warming up next to it. Yeah. And having that thing. That's you almost don't even yeah. want them to get warm so you can keep them in the heater for longer. Like you don't even <laughs> want your feet to get warm. You it's to true. That initial, that initial feeling of, it's I like used to play, burning. I remember going to this, um, I used to play golf at university. We went to this, uh, Fuck, it sounds like the dumbest thing ever. They were the Scottish Golf Championship every year and they'd hold... They'd this hold. is crazy going from no. bodyboarding in Tasmania yeah. to golf in but Scotland. Was, hey, <laughs> they'd hey host guys, host we're host fucking six <laughs> minutes yes, in, cunts. In. Fucking strap in! <laughs> strap in! They'd, they'd host this tournament in the northern part of Scotland in February. So it was cold as fuck. And just like, why the fuck would you do this? Like, the course is frozen almost. And we're staying in these caravans all sleeping in sleeping bags with like, um, what do you call them? Long johns, like full thermals on. We're wearing all of our wet proof, like our waterproof golf gear and beanies on. Fucking like rich cunts. And like seeing you like- you have that many clothes? Seeing, seeing your luxury. breath, seeing your breath and like putting the fucking gas, the caravan gas stove on in the morning to try and fucking stop the shivering. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking cold cunt. <laughs> I'm talking about bodyboarding in socks in Tasmania. Yeah, yeah. I'm fucking talking about- It's like sounds tropical from Scotland. <laughs> nah, people nah. probably do think it is tropical. Yeah, it's the only closest thing to Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's not, that's fucking basically Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my old man just losing his shit because I'd stole all his Explorer socks. You know those Explorer yeah. socks? Yeah. He used to like, every dad had them and he wore on a job site and my dad was a landscape artist, so Explorer socks were fucking everything. And he hated it because I used to steal every pair and take them bodyboarding. I'd use <laughs> them, I'd put them under my fins so I didn't get blisters and then I'd just leave them at the beach because I was a useless, shitty little kid. <laughs> and home, Dad was like, I can't keep buying these fucking socks. They're like five <laughs> bucks a pair, dude. Get your shit together. <laughs> he ended up buying me like some wetsuit socks but I never wore them because it was too goofy. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you didn't want the actual, the actual <laughs> things. Yeah, you wanted yeah. the socks. Yeah. Yeah. The you sell out just immediately. Like, <laughs> just to never acknowledge it for your entire life and he just had this sock mystery. He's going <laughs> to... Fucking fall into the grave. <laughs> it's like ah, yeah. fucking socks. I've lost like for eight hundred pairs of socks. It's kind of like when your best mate and bandmate works for a fucking really cool uh, 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 clothing label, and you still wear fucking high vis. <laughs> 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 well, you're gonna get a sca- you're gonna get taken for a fucking COVID marshal cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna come up and go like this. They're not standing far enough apart. Fuck off. <laughs> So good. <laughs> so, boys, you've just released a fucking record. Yeah, we li- gave it a good listen to it this week. Yeah. Um, really loved it. You've got a, a brand new fan. My two year old son. I was in the car with me this morning, and uh, we put on, put the album on, and we're just driving home. And Pressure was obviously the first uh, song on the record, and uh, he it finished. And he goes, "Daddy, Pressure, Pressure again." <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. So you've got a, you've got a, you got a brand new. So between Moana and fucking uh, yeah, Frozen. The, the, the Frozen soundtrack. Yeah, that's funny because Walt actually just hit us up recently to do their next time. Um, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah, it's called do- to- to- Toilet Rape Scene to- <laughs> Story. It's about a couple of punk cats from the wrong side of town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's like yeah, fox and hound shit. All that. <laughs> that's so good. Now, how's how's it feel to like when did you record it? How how's it feel to be releasing a record right now? And and I want, let's talk about like the motivation and where it came from and where you guys have been. Uh, not we, like let's not we don't need to talk about the fucking COVID aspect unless it's a major thing. But yeah, like how, how's the how's when it been? It's we, a strange time. We recorded twice, yeah, two we, weekends. We recorded twice. You did weekends. it all in two weekends. Yeah. Yeah, in what, six days? Wow. Yeah, six days, so three days. It was pretty much a day. Is that normal for up. you guys? That was the way too much time <laughs> spending <laughs> really? in the studio. We don't usually put that much effort into anything. 
Um, <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna say about it. we're gonna say about your dress sense. But <laughs> we'd already mentioned that. Listen, I'm in your fucking, fucking Jake hey, Smith. Jake Smith talking about. I just about bought these you. three days ago. It's yeah, you can tell. This is old Jake wears. He's, He's got, got a like tractor on it. Of them. <laughs> First it's choice to see. It's an excavator, but anyway. Shit. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. He's calling it up. Back it up. Yeah, yeah. Where you guys gonna go? You guys to Spanner. These guys. Go to oh. King's College for sure. <laughs> Claw hammer. <laughs> <laughs> we got 35 <laughs> minutes on this podcast <laughs> to fill cunts. You gotta come up with something other than Nini's tarts and tracks. <laughs> well, I still want to go back to the Nini's tarts. We got other treats. Today, <laughs> <laughs> We're not done. I want to eat one. <laughs> I fucking want to eat one too. But like, like, let's talk about the record a uh, bit. So you 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 recorded it where? Oh, we wrote it in Casino. Which is okay. why it's called Casino. So yeah. I love I love Casino. I spent a, like a, a little weekend there. Been through there, yeah. It's really? beautiful yeah. part of the world, huh? Yeah, it is. It smells like dead cows, but it is a nice place. There's beautiful stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I met the mayor. I stars. stayed at the house of the mayor. That's where, where we fucking the recorded the album. That's where we wrote the album. What is that? That's the fucking house. How great is that house? <laughs> the, like, it's the it's the stable, only Airbnb you can see. I can't imagine. Creek, yeah. Castle. He always comes around yeah. to introduce that's himself. The, that's where we wrote <laughs> the album. He gave me a hat. What? We get a fucking hat. Yeah, it's because you're in that fucking shit. <laughs> I just got a soft warning. What did yeah. the hat what? say? Just, I like, just being noisy. He was pretty I was, chill though. I was with yeah, my, was I was with my it. like two year old daughter and my wife, so See, it was a, it was like, it was a good conversation. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, mate. I've seen you fucking cunts around, <laughs> <laughs> you Sydney types. Yeah, he was a nice have guy. Let's yeah. yeah. make yeah. Casino great again, Cap. You guys back to check in the morning. It's a cool place. The open fire. Yeah. Yeah. So that was and it was we freezing. Them. No, well, yeah, we wrote uh, probably half yeah, the wrote, album, wrote maybe. The album. Over which period, boys? Yeah, really Over which period? When when was this recorded? Oh, uh, written? Uh, February last year. We just like we wanted last year, twenty nineteen. Yeah, mm. we wanted to put an album yeah. together, and we were just dragging our feet, and it wasn't happening. Like <clears throat> we just because we were touring and shows kept popping up, and other shit was going on. Everyone works full time, and so we just none none of us were like. Oh yeah, we're gonna stop working and yeah. make this thing happen. But we knew we wanted to write an album. And Jacob so was uh, living at a place with a studio, but we knew that our uh, self, uh, whatever that word is, when you make yourself do stuff, motivation. Um, well, not motivation. Just like we'd be like, all right, discipline? yeah, discipline. Like if we were like, oh, all right, we'll lock in a weekend at the little studio at Jacob's place. And then it'd get to like 10 and be like, when will the surf done? Should we go to the pub? The sharks yeah. are playing soon. So you have to remove yourself. Yeah. So we had to fully. <laughs> Self-discipline is. Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> Self-discipline was non-existent. So you so have like ideas. Had to pull everyone away from life. But it was sick. We had a bath. Oh, we had a sauna. Yeah, we had a sauna. Had a couple of baths together. That's. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> only if you make it weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. It's only weird if you think it's weird, <laughs> <laughs> and if you say it's weird on a podcast, it's real weird. Yeah, to <laughs> Other than that, it's great. <laughs> yeah, so we wrote it out there, and then we wrote more, like maybe another three songs between then and recording. Yeah, we yeah. recorded it at the music farm, which um, our friend Paul McNeil. We know Paul. The mayor. The mayor. Yeah, the yeah, mayor. You know the the mayor. other mayor. He's yeah. fucking mighty so Tasmania as we speak. Uh, yeah, he from is. From one mayor to another. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Essentially He's such shame. a beautiful man. Yeah. He is a great guy. Yeah. So the self-proclaimed <laughs> <laughs> mayor of Byron, he yeah. was managing this place called The Music Farm out in um, Kurabel on Coolamon Scenic Drive behind Byron. Kurabel? Yeah. And um, yeah, we went out there. It's like the best place ever. And we had <coughs> Owen from Straight Arrows came up to record us and he was losing his shit the whole time. We took him swimming like he was a pet dog <laughs> or something. Owen and and swimming <laughs> is a strange <laughs> idea for me. It was strange Cam. to watch. Owen on the beach, Jacob and Cam. <laughs> <laughs> just like Jacob and Cam live it was like more that. or less on the beach in Suffolk Park, just outside Did you not disturb the sand? Owen. <laughs> 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 he couldn't frothy. believe that you could live that close to the beach. I don't think he's been that close to salt water for that long. Was it always the salty? Was it always the salty? Was it taste like my tears? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his enthusiasm. He was just so excited the whole time. He was frothing and we kind of, uh, yeah, we wanted more time just to hang out, but you know, you know us, we're a bunch of fucking workhorses, so we didn't let him <laughs> leave the studio. <laughs> but when was when was that? That was the back end of last year. So it would have been, <clears throat> I think we did it October and November. Okay. So we had all these plans, like 
a bunch of shit happened that just I mean, we were touring and then we had like some personal stuff that just kind of made everything a bit harder for everyone mm -hmm. to kind of commit to doing it so we literally this album we thought we were going to have recorded mid last year and out the end of last year yeah. and then we had this big plan to have it out sort of february march and we we're kind of hustling to do that really hard because we wanted to go to the uk and kind of do a bunch of shit this year and then not to go on the COVID thing, but it just when that happened, we were just like, oh, yeah, we can chill. You can't now, avoid the COVID like, conversations, yeah. to be honest. It's not like we're all sitting here going, oh, yeah, now in my little corner of the world, I got a little bit disrupted. Like, the fucking world stopped. <laughs> yeah. So, and it, it's like, so yeah, it's, it's fair enough to yeah. acknowledge it. Yeah. And That's it brought it. us time in a way, and like, we were like, oh, shit, we don't need to like flog ourselves to get this out. But we kind of, I feel like we all just wanted to get it out so people could hear it because yeah. we'd been listening more like, yeah had had the songs for like over a year some of them for like two years and so um yeah and then a few people we spoke to that played in other bands like oh is that weird that you want to put it out like during this and we're like i don't know i just want to fucking put it out yeah. and then we music's can, music yeah, i want to put it out Everyone music's that. music right well i i my experience of this whole personally is like the more music i can have right now the better like the role of the artist has never seemed clearer to me in my mind, which is to fucking elucidate troublesome fucking scenarios mm. and, yeah. pro and and give me a track, give me a, give me some way to fucking digest this that isn't obvious, that isn't a fucking news story, that isn't mental. Give me some an emotional track through which I can fucking consume, and 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 deal and 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 <clears throat> and move through the like and heal like because it's been a really disruptive time. I I just think that music is such a powerful. All art is, but specifically music to humans is just something really powerful. And li I think that's when you ask people like what they've been listening to through this period, it's very telling. Either you know, some people like listen to angry music, and because they've just got something to need out, whether it's new or old. Yeah. But I think the role of the artist right now for uh, for me is like yeah. fucking give me. Like, give it it's to me, like fucking produce it. This is what you guys are meant to be here for. Yeah. yeah. We've seen it here with, with trying to just book shows. You know, like, it's it's 50-50. Some people are like, fuck yeah, let's play. Like, can't, we haven't played for a year or months, whatever. I really want to yeah. play. Other people are, oh, we're going to wait till it's like 100 standing. Like like, it's, that like is completely a, out with your control. Like, it's like, a career yeah, decision. Happen, yeah, it's like, like and that idea of, <laughs> it's survival. <laughs> yeah, and it's like just doing, like, there's so many eyes on the, the sort of the finite amount of, music and art and live shows that's kicking about like why would you not want to be a part of that like yeah. celebrate yeah. this moment for what it is you can still go back and do your 300 cap show with fucking a mosh pit whenever that's allowed again but yeah. like you'll see tonight like and it's you know you experience a little moment of it there filming empty room but you know like playing playing fucking high energy shows to 50 people sat down it's fucking a bit weird but also it's like, like it's something it you've never experienced yeah. before it's yeah. a fucking nice. new thing like it's, <laughs> it's kind of sick because it's just just like you fucking sit there and you don't throw your shoes and shit at me and you fucking listen to what <laughs> yeah. you're doing. Like, and what I you're doing. Compare, like, um, like, cause I make art and stuff as well. And like at a gallery, it's like the works on the wall are like passive and you're just watching people look at the shit that you did and yeah. the work can't really do much. And they're being like throwing all their shit at your work. And then when you play a live show, this is like when they're sitting down, it's like the ultimate of the opposite. You're like, you fucking sit down and I'll attack you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Is, so tell me, you just touched on that, like uh, the idea of what you guys are doing. And do you feel like you're, do you feel that you're misunderstood in some way? Or do you feel like the, the and which is fucking completely valid if you are, but like, but, but I was taken with the depth of the lyricism and the, and the kind of the energy and the direction. Some of our favorite bands that we've been consuming in the last kind of 12 to 18 months you know, that last Idols record was really important to us. We thought it was fucking great. The mu new music, I'm a bit on the fence with. It seems Same. to be a little bit too yeah. woke well, right we'll now. We'll all put our hands yeah. up for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're a little bit too woke at the moment. It's like, oh, come on, guys. Yeah. Like the, the the mask reveal, like, oh, it was me the whole time. Like, <laughs> anyway, but but then the murder, like bands like The Murder Capital coming out, like Dublin, like really fucking powerful you know, um, uh, Peep Temple, you know, like Fontaine's, Fontaine's CC, oh, yeah, great band, band. Great. but they're connecting like really masculine tones and, and masculine tone, like, uh, conversations like about men, a ma masculine conversation, um, and, and redirecting it and challenging it in a way that's not necessarily feminist. You yeah. know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's just a challenge and a conversation I think is really different. And I, I picked up quite a lot of that in your, in your yeah. music and in your lyrics and, so that lyric read about the pissing next to the racist and sort of be, being, the, you know, you know, being that silent minority of, of a man like 
challenging our own part of society. Like it's you know it's true. It's like it's yeah. not all about like that that sort of gender mm-hmm. piece. It's like as masculine males, you're allowed to question our own selves and what our and our place within this and how we can sort of respond better. For sure. And just being able to, I don't know. I don't, to answer your question, I don't necessarily think that we're, I actually haven't really even thought about when we're, if we're misunderstood, except for when you get full fucking Darrow, Darrow's at shows going like, oh, fucking love your shit, but also fucking blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, do you fucking watch the show? Like, do you listen to anything that we were going on about? Like, <laughs> yeah. you've, I think you've missed the point. But that doesn't happen often. I don't think, I don't know. I don't. And that's about finding your audience. It's always going to happen. Yeah, and like I don't necessarily because that's the other thing. Like you don't want to be a fuck in a fucking echo chamber, just going. Oh, I read this mm. fucking thing recently. I'll write a song about yeah. that. Everyone, everyone, we think the, the same left. as you. Everything yeah. you said is, yeah, is yeah. like exactly yeah. how I think. And, and the, yeah. the danger of that is the moment that you have something different to say, which is slightly off kilter with what the echo chamber is fucking yelling about, then. Right now, we get sh- like the world shouts you down, or the echo chamber that you're yeah. in. So if you're standing within it and talking as if you've got some level of importance, and then you go, "Oh, I need to change my fucking yeah. view on this because something's happened in my own fucking personal life," and then all of a sudden you're like, "What? I'm getting yeah. attacked by the people." <laughs> but uh, you literally, know, fucking, literally don't like. Yeah, I fucking hate that shit. That's why I, I don't know. We don't. I don't think, and I think we. Kind of, I know Cam gets upset about it. It's like, oh, like people see it's like a political band. And I guess I think any band is, what most bands are innately song? political anyway, just yes. by being in a band. And so true. it's too, I don't know. I don't, I don't set out to be overly like political, but when you're fucking, everything else in my life is pretty good. I've got a girlfriend who I love, so I'm not going to write songs about girls and shit. So it's the thing that pisses me off the most is just shit that's going on. Mm. It's not like, specifically like i don't i don't like jumping on the coattails of like fox gomo who did this and this and this and like yeah but also like give the kind of break you did this and that's all right like mm. you did that that's okay like you can't i don't like the full picking aside putting yourself in a box and be like i'm this and these are the things i believe on this yeah. piece of paper here and anything outside of this i'm not that i think that's a sensible line to take simply for the fact that it's real real you know like the idea that you can align yourself so wholeheartedly with something yeah. or yeah. someone <clears throat> or an idea to the degree that your entire being, like that's where ideology, what ideology is and what the danger of ideology is, is that you become so invested that you can't, in, in a concept, in a thought process, in, a, in an idea, in an ideology, that you, even when it's proven to be unhelpful, <laughs> yeah. destructive, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, and, and anti-ethical to everything that you fucking stand for in every other part of your you have to stick with it because without it, you have you've just take away the foundation from which you've built your life. Which is where religion's really damaging to yeah. people yeah. because all of a sudden you go, yeah, but it's like scientifically proven yeah. that the world isn't six and a half thousand years. And then people <laughs> go, yeah, but the, yeah. You know, dinosaurs <laughs> is there to test us. And I think the other thing too about that is like people, I, I don't know, I, I guess people could see not taking like a side or one thing as like having, being like flaky or being like, oh, I don't know, like what side? I'm just like, I'm sitting in the middle. Like, I don't want to make a decision. But it's not like that. It's like things change all the time. Mm. You just make the decisions as they come. And it's not yeah. like, yeah, it's not like, oh, yeah. oh, I don't know, man. I'll just donkey vote this year. It's like, yeah. this and year, and opi- opinions this, are there to the, be, this yeah. person should be in because they've done the best thing. Yeah, opinion, like, I only vote liberal changed. and oh, I only vote Labor, and you're like, well, they're fucked up. This like this guy's a prick, so don't vote for him. Yeah, they're both. It, they're both it so comes down to like the, the people specific. It's we talk a lot recently about that sort of like how we're beholden to legacy politics and people just trying to leave their mark on something, whether they're just trying to get something through that's maybe not for the best, and they probably know it's for the best, but they just know it makes a mark. It'll be written in history books, and that yeah. makes them yeah. that makes their entire life have purpose, yeah. even though it fucks over the rest of us. But it's, tr- <laughs> it's, trying to, it's like trying to put a skylight in a, fucking ha- in a house full of fucking windows, you know, just because yeah. you fucking yeah. can. It's like, no, you don't oh, need to. Weird. There's yeah. no yeah. point that. Anything. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah, you. <laughs> like, uh, specifically to, specifically <laughs> yeah. to your world. I want to write this down in this blue pen. Like, <laughs> listening to you guys, uh, <laughs> yeah, what's that? J1K0. When it comes to. Uh, oh, I think it actually just said uh, Jake's. Oh, Jake's. Right. Yeah. 
like for you guys growing up, what was the real? What was some of the turning points about realizing that? Because I grew up in this coastal culture too, and I know there's a lot of great humans from it, and I also know that there's a great deal of um, really deep rooted misogyny and and uh, and racism and. You know, I think it comes from a lack of, a deep lack of education rather than a place of fucking yeah. really than than any um, uh, inbuilt. Um, it's uh, not innate. It's not. Like in a, it's not from them. Yeah, they're they're great humans, yeah. and they just don't get the level of education around these topics. But those are two really key. You know, like if I, I it, it just became to a level of such deep. Uncomfort, uncomfort for me to be around people when I speak about fucking lowies and you know sluts and yeah. you know it was really uncomfortable because I'm like that's my friend yeah. and I know her and I have a relationship I have a friendship with her um, and 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 it can, carries out into you know like a race and and other things but when were, were there some points in your you guys lives where you just like nah and that's it's not 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 just those individual stories but when you when you thought that music might be the way that you kind of let the world know. That that you were different, and that, you, that maybe your little corner of the world needed to change. Well, I don't. As I said, I grew up in Cronulla, and um, like they teach about, well, yeah, something crazy that I hadn't thought about that someone pointed out the other day is that they teach um, they teach students in high school about um, the Cronulla riots as this like really big. Um, racial moment in Australian history but they still won't talk about like all the genocide and everything that happened and you're like mm -hmm. um, obviously it was bad the riots but it's like that's like a fucking blimp on the like scheme of everything but you want to talk about that so yeah growing up in somewhere yeah like Cronulla and even last night we stopped and got a kebab and we were waiting I was just like Looking around, going fucking hell! Like, what is this place? <laughs> but like, I you know what it is? It's Australia, mate. Mm, yeah. It's actually Australia. We like we sit in these fucking other bubbles, and you know what it is? It's fucking Australia. Yeah, it's actually closer to as what Australia is than where I live. Like in my postcode, it is closer to a representation of what's actually happening than than in Byron Bay or, or in or yeah. Stanmore well, in Newtown. That's the thing, you know. Like Byron Bay is a bubble when everyone thinks that they're real fucking. Woke and everything up there and Spiro and shit, but you look Spiro. around, everyone's <laughs> pretty much everyone's white and they're going, yeah, but we're accepting. You're like, yeah, but what really? if like a bunch of immigrants moved here? Would you be accepting <clears throat> then? Like, you know, so it's easy to be in that yeah. bubble of all white accepting people going from a distance. Yeah. Where, yeah, like that whole NIMBY thing, like not in my backyard, like, yeah, it's fucking crazy. But I think music, uh, for me personally, I'd never ever been in another band and Jacob played drums, obviously. Yeah, I played drums in a, some hardcore bands kind of when I was younger, but never a band that sort of saw so that, any level of success like we yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. So and you so you you've been in this band for a long time, or was it a new a newish no, thing, a sort of a thing to explore, probably or like, like four years? I think it's about a fourth year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but always loved music, played instruments, yeah. or but just never really. I used to play the yeah. flute. Yeah, <laughs> and did and you? Um, but you're fucking great at it. And Jacob I can almost play. had a rap. I'm career. pretty good on the skin flute. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, I career. almost had a rap career in year 11 with Mickey Kojak, who's a really um, famous producer. <laughs> yeah, Is that dude, true? You got to hear it. High school yeah. captain. You got to hear it. <laughs> really? It's not PC at all. <laughs> what was your hip hop name? Holes with Holes. a dollar sign. H O L E. That's so dollar good. Sign. With a dollar sign. Yeah, dogs. Yeah, and it was. And when you, when you say not PC, well, what kind of fucking shit were you laying down? Well, like kind of year 11, horny year 11 kid would. Yes. <laughs> You know, I, I feel I like I feel like uh, there should be a free pass for every um, pass like mistakes. un PC kind of like thing that slipped through your mouth until you're like twenty one, twenty two. Yeah, I reckon after twenty one, twenty two, like fuck the like. You don't think you sh I don't think you should be able to drink or vote until you're time twenty one, twenty two. Like really? No, I don't. Like fuck. To be honest. Like <laughs> 18, <laughs> we can't I make a lot perhaps. of money from fucking 18 year olds getting pissed, <laughs> but it's not good for their fucking poor little brains, is it? But, um, but the idea that, um, that people can fuck up yeah, and make those, like, I would love to be able to play that right now in this podcast and for the whole world to go like this. <laughs> 
Uh, oh yeah, fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. How wrong was 17 year old Jacob? Yeah, exactly. How good would that yeah, be? How but good were those bars? You, I yeah. think yeah. you just don't Fuck get- those bars were good. You shouldn't have said that though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, you had cadence, it. but man, that was fucking wrong. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I suppose you get no, te- no context. <laughs> what was the what was the last song you played in the on the empty room there? The, well, the non-empty uh, room? Face of the future. Because it was- That was great. There's an element of that because it was very much a sort of just- you know, not a rant by any means, but just like, just you know, machine gun fire sort of lyricism. So it's maybe stems from that idea of just you just write write as you see it, and it, it'll fit yeah. into the songs. It's it's still there that I sort of idea. Can't of, do did the, did it, does it rhyme that much? Do you still sort of try Sometimes, and write? Yeah, well, because I I write my shit as I guess like if you wanted to get fancy as like poetry, mm. or I just write shit in my phone, mm. and I can't like sit at home with my kui and just fucking. Strum out some shit and then go. Can't you can't on play your anything cue. other than like fucking Metallica on guitar. Yeah, yeah. Just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can also play Getting Tribute s- by Tenacious D. Oh, yeah, you can play Tribute. Oh, can you really? Yeah. Oh, well, That's like a party yeah, trick, I reckon. It is. Um, what is but that, yeah, like I D guess. and G? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a Kiwi and I fucking play to, to, <laughs> to lay down all these Spiro broads. <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 loving, I'm loving the fucking. I'm, I'm loving the fucking Kiwi. Can we, and I've never heard the term Spiro either. It used to be a thing. So. Actually, a, 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 a topic on what we were... All these people yeah. are Spiro. You'll experience it in about three hours in Byron. You'll understand <laughs> it instantly. I know we what you're talking about. about, about yeah, fuck, you know, I've never heard the term. <laughs> we were talking about what we've been talking about, that whole idea of like people you grew up with and the sort of, you know, the, the, the you know, misdirected uh, fucking misogyny and shit that just was around and it just made you uncomfortable. When Because we met in Edinburgh. Jacob was living there. And these this... Scottish boys would talk about their girlfriends and they'd call them the coup. And like, it's Jake's <laughs> missus, Ali would be like, oh, so no, like a bird call. It's so nice. He got like a b- calling their bird. I was like, no, Jake, they call them the cow. <laughs> like, that's oh, like, oh, co- wow. my like, wife thought it was, it's yeah, like, it's like, no, it's like the like coup's going to come around there. Like, 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 a, like, like, ma- like a mating call. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, isn't that so sweet? I was like, <laughs> what? Kitty's like, Jake, tell, you, tell <laughs> Ali that they're calling the they're her cow. Their cow. <laughs> and I was like, when I told her, she was furious, <laughs> rightfully. Um, she'd been, well, support- and, she'd been and, supporting them and, for days. Yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, months. Yeah. Started <laughs> calling Jake her coo. you my little Highland coo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like music uh, for me, was obviously always a part of my life as it is part of most people's lives. And then, yeah, like I, I went to art school and shit and then always wanted to be in a band, but I couldn't do anything. I didn't like, I used to go to I've get guitar people. practice from my neighbor in like year five and six. I'm like, hey man, yeah, I just want to learn this new Slipknot song. And he's going, um, you have like a fucking Gibson? Is that the shit guitar brand? No, Gibson's a good yeah, one. Like yeah, you've got, Gibson's a good one. What's Dick the shit one? Or Ashton or? Ashton's Ash- a, not a good one. Ashton. Yeah, you've got a um, nylon string Ashton acoustic here. <laughs> I don't know if I can teach you how to play people equal shit on it. <laughs> 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 I'm going, mate, you don't know fucking anything. Give it your best shot. No, with that fucking attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you never get out of the shot, you can't. It's not metal. <laughs> and so, so, but then yeah. like. He's standing there in a face mask. <laughs> really disappointed. <Yeah. laughs> in a prison skin. Little fucking thing swinging all over. And a keg and a baseball <laughs> bat just ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I don't know. I kind of now looking back, I'm like, oh, true. Like, I like those songs because of the words in them. Yeah. Not because I fucking get, gave, a, not that I don't like guitar. But I'm like, I don't know what they're playing. I'll just listen to fucking yeah. paper like, well, shit. But of course, sometimes, like, some people, like, there's that old story of people putting up an ad in a fucking paper, like, oh, want to start a band? And sometimes it's like, it's in you, but you don't really think about it until you meet the people. Yeah. And you're like, this is really easy. We we should probably just in- investigate this and explore this a yeah. little bit. Oh, and yeah. It can really was like, yeah, that was how this whole thing came together. We'd been hanging out. We kind of met each other a couple of times over the summer. Jacob turned up at my house at a house party one night and it was just this dude with blonde hair running around my Wasn't house. Wasn't invited. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck back is that either. dude that keeps going from room to room in my house and then he was just gone like that. He's in my fridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple of weeks later, I saw him. I was like, I 
I didn't. Do you owe me a fucking tub of mayo? The other night, but you were at my fucking house. Yeah. Like, we're writing all this um, slip on the <laughs> lyrics all over the toilet walls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have to write yeah. the shit part and shit? <laughs> <laughs> really? Again, bro? Every time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we like kind of hung out. Not that many times, really. But I think somehow we clicked in the middle of that that we were listening to the same bands. Yeah, heaps at the time, and then when we started talking, we were like, "Oh, you're really into that? Have you heard? You know, same old fucking story. I like this, you like that. Oh, have you heard? Whatever." And then we were sitting at the pub, and have you heard Slipknot? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you heard Slipknot. And I pulled a mask out of my pocket. Same. Closet Slipknot fans are fucking everywhere. It's just a gift, bro. <laughs> <bro. laughs> But yeah, and then it was literally Jacob pulled out his phone. He's like, oh man, I, you play drums, eh? I was like, yeah. He's like, fuck, I'd be pretty keen on starting a band. He's like, I can't play an instrument, but I can yell pretty good. And he pulled yeah. his phone out. He literally had a bunch of demos of him screaming into his phone. Really? That's cool. Yeah, with this other, my friend Lame, before I moved up um, to Bone, me and my friend Lame had started, uh, like just me and him trying to do stuff. And it was like, or not like a secret, but it was like, oh man, I'm starting a band. Yeah. Fuck, I don't know. Like, should I keep maintaining my rap career or should I go to punk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have taken Slippery Stone. <laughs> yeah, I changed the dollar sign to a Z, no. <laughs> what's, but, the, yeah. what's, what's the, the um, what's the, like, i got a kind of two-part question here. Two-part well, question? A two-part two question. <laughs> 12 <Yeah>. minutes. <laughs> yeah, was me talking. Come on, Jack. And then, we've got to finish, <laughs> and, th- and then we'll have to finish, unfortunately. <laughs> a 12 minutes of me talking and then us finishing. <laughs> Is there like a cold? Is there like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, two part question. Um, number one, um, what was it like noticing that, that you, the things that you guys care about were starting to be reflected in, um, in the music that you guys. Uh, that you guys care about in, you know, the forms of bands like Idols, the Murder Capital, as we've spoken about, at the same time you guys are doing it. And I, I suppose there's a moment of commentary here. Like one of the most exciting things about, about you know, punk music I've seen is this arrival of this new w- wave of punk, which isn't necessarily just about, you know, my fucking, I smoke bongs with your mum yeah. chat. <laughs> which I did do, but. Yeah, <laughs> and I think, and I think, you know, it's fun and it's entertaining and it's, a, and, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not, not trying to shit talk it. It's all about the government either. It's like, it's very yeah. emotional. It's very private. Well, well, yeah, but, with the, you know, oh, but yeah. the, no, but there's that, that, that other, there's that, 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 you know, I just, I don't know if you heard it, I, like that, my mum fucked my dad and I fucking smoked the bong with your it, dad's rat, you know, that kind of that. It's got a place. That, it reckon, does. And I'm not shit talking, I'm not shit talking it, but there's also this, conversation that's changed where it's not the it's like the the we, punk music was about destroying institutions that are oppressed and now it's us it's like it's like masculinity which it doesn't need to be fo- it, it needs to be taken apart investigated and restructured and put back on the table as something more healthy i think i don't think taking it away is the is the answer mm. but i think the bands like um like yourselves and um and, and these other bands that we've been discussing are really integral. And also I, w- I was so surprised to see it because I thought punk was dead. I thought punk didn't have a fucking voice left because I I was thinking that punk was always going to fucking just be that anti-authority thing. I'm like, how many fucking versions of anti-authority can you get? And then all of a sudden the authority was us and the the thing that we needed, that needed, that it was challenging was something so personal and, also, and the message is so vital and, and clear. And you guys are coming through at that same time with these same bands. I just, I wonder how you landed on it and how you felt about it because you do stand out, you know, with a few others in, in, uh, in the Australian industry, you do stand out from that kind of new wave renaissance of that, you know, I fucked your dad yeah. punk. Yeah. Well, I think, um, yeah, f- for me, obviously, like punk was, like I grew up listening through my dad, like listening to, he loved the Sex Pistols, his favorite, like loved the Saints. So like, I had that like, you know, playing. And then I think I, what I found frustrating, and when we started the band, I kind of, at like, you know, the first few songs were just about whatever, because that was like what I thought, you know, I had to do. And probably also wasn't as, um, hadn't figured out what I thought about shit yet you know yeah. mm-hmm. and so then 
I don't know. I guess I think it's important um, and not – I try I, – I guess I'm really conscious of not trying to be like an authority on anything but just relaying how I myself feel about certain things and not try and be like – this is how you should think because this went up on Twitter last week and yeah. then this, like, I'm not at all interested in fucking playing into, like, fucking, tr like, political trends and shit. Like, I try and avoid that with everything and, and avoid being, like, a... Uh, yeah, an authority on anything. And yet at the same time, you seem to strike this tone of, of a level of wisdom and a level of, um, of authority and and clarity around your little corner of the world which is interesting to hear you kind of put into some sort of clarity around w the way you you shape things and 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 what the way you approach it but the output is it seems really clear to me about what you believe in and and I don't, like yeah, I I, th I think it's a I've, I think what you're saying is a very important distinction between you know giving people a a description of where you're at, and, or giving them a prescription, yeah, of where yeah. they just should not be. Being elitist and being like, "You're all fucking dumb if you don't think this." It's just like, you gotta leave enough room, yeah, for someone for sure. to fucking have I a voice. Yeah, yeah I, I, I just, I'm really against like, yeah, things like, yeah. Just where do you think? Jacob, where do you think the whole thing's going? Sorry, no, sorry, no. you know, you were oh, going to say. I was going to Jacob. This is a weird thing to say. He kind of taught me a lesson, but. So that's years, not weird at all. Six years between us, I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. <coughs> in ages? Mm. Yeah. So Who's you, uh, you're older? Jacob. Yeah, I'm older. Jacob's younger. Jacob's the singer, that is. Um I mean, we, sp we spend a lot of time in cars, driving places, hanging out. You have a lot of just conversations about shit. And Jacob probably taught me the biggest lesson about being too committed to your beliefs where you ostracize people mm. and where you really turn them off and can scare them away. And was he was talking to me about Daryl Davis who was an old jazz musician in the 80s, 80s, I think, 70s, 80s, befriended the head of the Ku Klux Klan. I heard about this guy. Yeah. And he made it basically his task in life. And it was like the punkest, most badass fucking thing in the yeah, whole world. turned over one person at yeah. a time. Just, he yeah. decloaked something like eight Ku Klux Klan heads. Really? He, yeah. Got, he, he has their cloaks in, their, in his fucking yeah. wardrobe. And then watch, watch like watch Taking the documentaries heads. on him. It's fucking crazy. He used I saw to Joe speak. Rogan with him. Yeah, he speaks at Klan to. rallies. And he used to, and he was like untouchable, but it was just Jacob explaining that whole thing to me of how well he did of just, yeah, not just never polarizing anyone, not ostracizing them, not scaring them away. He's like, if you just come in too hard and you tell people that you're fucking right and they're wrong, you always kind of scare them. And that was like a big thing that, you know, we probably went kind of halfway through the yeah. relationship in a band where I was just like, oh, okay, that is sort of his angle. And it hit me like really well, struck a chord and I've, kind of seen that more and more since yeah in everything that we do and that's you said it like not you don't want to come across as like an authority i suppose i suppose it's one of these things in how you know how do bands deal with it you can maybe look at idols for example and listen to the new music because if the bigger you come and then therefore you have influence over people and therefore it becomes a sort of state uh, a statement of authority yeah. 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 even though you were never intended to be there but like like you say as, as long as you're not like i i agree wholeheartedly wholeheartedly with that and the idea of never never ostracizing yourself that you can that the chance that you ever change your opinion slightly on something you'd look like a dickhead you know what i mean like yeah. just be open to the conversation like i was like a, a friend who sort of got to know better recently this other scottish fella and it's he reminds me of Jake sometimes when he got when he got real pissed and he's like just and it's like just talking at people, talking at people, and it's like he's like, Oh, it's not about like people proving me like I don't want people to prove that I'm wrong. It's about people to tell me that I'm not right. Like <laughs> it's just like <laughs> I, I mean, love that yeah. shit. Yeah. That's why <laughs> when we were in New Zealand last year, we got so many good new Kiwi friends up in um Byron and a lot of them like we've what, there's like a crew of twenty of them or something. And when we go to New Zealand, I get the shits because they're so nice and polite. I'm like, disagree with me, please, about yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Just challenge me. Yeah. Well, they go, yeah, yeah. that's, that's Fish and right. Fish shit. Well, I'm, well, I'm, <laughs> damn it. I feel like yeah, this is why you've the, never the achieved anything. <laughs> 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 yeah, the, can, the Canadians have achieved nothing <laughs> except eliminating COVID. Yeah, eliminating COVID. Yeah, for three the days. Prime yeah, yeah. Minister in the entire world. Yeah. But I think that there's, there's something to the idea that, you know, the the more hardline people are on things, it's actually an, an admission that they actually need, they actually desire 
conversation. Yeah. They actually, yeah. you know, They're locking things down that hard, you know, is in some way an admission of something pathological that they need readjustment with that's actually separate to the actual issue that they mm. latch on to. Yeah. You know, so the idea of, you know, people in the Ku Klux Klan, you know, a lot of the the core reasoning is not to do with the fact that they actually feel like they're, su- they're, they're in any way su- supreme, that they're, they're, that they're better than other people. You know, it's the fact that they've been isolated and and alienated from the uh, from a culture, yeah, yeah. from 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 the from the general rise in wealth and 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 equality in their own country, and they see even people, the, you know, they're they're immigrants, you know, they're they're Irish yeah. or fucking Polish immigrants. So they've been there for two yeah. generations, and but yet some reason because they're white that they can, you know, that. That they they can say that you know someone who's been there for three hundred and fifty years, you know they were slaves, but they're all of a sudden it's they're they're white, so it's their country. Yeah. But yeah. actually, because they've just been so fucking pushed to the margins by every every other mechanism, every other institution, and so their response is to be heard. And the re- the reason why this Daryl Davis guy has such a degree of success is because he does this, and then he actually just points out we have more in common. Mm. Yeah. He finds common ground instead of telling the other people why we're different, and, and I disagree. Or why with they're wrong? Because they're yeah. not—they're not wrong in the sense that they want to feel special or a part of something. Yeah. What they're wrong about is what they believe. Is, is, is what <laughs> yeah. they believe. Yeah. Is is the common ground they're finding with their fellow man? Mm. That's the fucking problem. Not the desire to belong to something. Yeah. The desire to belong to something is so innate with us. Mm. If you take that away, I will. If you take that away from me fully, I will fucking sign up for the first thing <laughs> that gives me a glimmer of belonging. Yeah. I will, and all of us will, and that's yeah. why it exists. But it's. But it's it's crazy that like as you, we've, we spoke with this Nenish Tarts chef. to the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> should, we spoke with the chef Welcome last to the week. Welcome the podcast, fuckers. <laughs> the chef last week, Luke Burgess. He was. You should listen to. It. He's fucking. He's very Burgess. smart. Great. Is he related I to mean, the Sam Burgess? No, 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 no. no but when you Google them, his brother yeah. Sam Burgess, his brother Luke, comes up a lot because they've got. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it's, well, we spoke a lot about like um, I don't know the the feelings of humanity to like never like with everything that's happened is. Pretty much all happened previously, yeah. and we fail to learn because there's a greed around, or there's just a natural, fucking, real animalistic, dumb, like part of humans just to sort of just go back to what we're doing because we're that yeah. fucking yeah. stupid. So that yeah, that idea of like, so yeah, people joining Ku Klux Klan, people joining like Crips and Bloods, Hare like Krishnas. like yeah, and like the the fact that when World War Two was going Hill on, song. they would stop on Christmas Day and the the they would play the Germans and the sort of and the Allies and it would play foot, play a game of football yeah. and they're basically the same people yeah. just doing the same thing yeah. on the opposite side like it's like no one's who's right here like yeah. who's right who's wrong exactly it's, yeah. but it's but we just we'll keep doing it it's like we talk about how there's so many lessons to be learned about how the world will miss COVID nineteen it's been a really beautiful thing to happen. But history has shown that we have got short fucking memories and we'll go back to being greedy little fucks as soon as we can and like fucking over the person next yeah, to you. Just yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Well, I hope not to do that with you guys. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I think I'll like you guys maybe next year as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like we've made some sort of show and they can mosh, throw, we'll throw <laughs> shoes at you from the <laughs> side Please of the stage. Yeah, <laughs> I promise not do Even if they're still sitting, we'll throw it for the side of the stage. We'll yeah. throw Dunlop volleys. For continuity's yeah. sake, between now and then, I promise to not listen to any of your lyrics and only buy shoes <laughs> I can throw. <laughs> <laughs> well, the crazy thing is that the only time someone's thrown a shoe at me, which really gave me the shits because he did it a few times, was in Byron and no one wears shoes in Byron. It was a pair of like, like semi-shine any fucking like River Island shoes or something. They were Birkenstocks. Polish crocodiles. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Birkenstocks. Uh, did I get nits and tinny at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, you Spiro cunts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boys, we'll let you go because I know you got to play a show tonight. And um, that just to recap, uh, thanks for you guys being here, for driving all the Coming way. all the way. And, uh, and then for sitting and having a fucking really beautiful chat. We really appreciate it. And we'd love to have you back anytime. And hopefully we can, you know... Um, 
go past all of the um, Nini's tart chat and straight into that fucking beautiful fat we're getting into towards <laughs> the end because sure. you know you guys got a lot Next to fucking say. Next time we'll start say. with Lamingtons. <laughs> 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 yeah. well, we well, we, we, we want to be every able time. We, we want to be able to air, air it. it. <laughs> We, we, we didn't even touch custard. We ended, up, we ended up with <laughs> racism and fucking yeah. and, 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 f- and masculinity. I don't want to end up with fucking like bestiality next time. Got Lamingtons, you cunt. <laughs> Boys, have a great night. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Boop.